What's up guys, Joey here. So I've been seeing a lot of Reddit posts lately, people having driver crashes on 22.3.1 and maybe 0.2. Uh, I did have my Radeon driver, like, you know, the icon, the typical, you know, disappearing icon because it's crashed um, symptoms. And I figured it was another driver update where AMD has messed with, and I'm not saying this is exactly what they've done. There could be something completely, you know, different going on, but the way I resolved it was treating it like what I believe is the problem. And that is between every driver update and all the aftermarket cards, AMD seemed to be messing with the tuning tab, uh, which is under performance tuning here. Uh, they seem to change, like they have changed it. If you go back like 10 driver versions or whichever one to start of the 2020 drivers, we used to have much finer control of minimum um, max voltages. We don't even have those now. And I believe they are tweaking the curve to try to improve user stability across the voltage range or maybe improve temperatures, but something just does not play well with aftermarket GPUs. And basically, I had my driver crashing on a fresh install and I loaded my undervolt profile and even my undervolt profile that has been stable across like all the 2020 drivers was still having the odd crash. So I boosted that undervolt by 10 MV. Uh, so normally my undervolt was 1150 MV and I boosted it by 10 to 1160 and zero driver crashing. I don't get any more driver crashing, but as you can see, I've got a max frequency, which is turned down. The default is like 280 something for me. And so that also affects, you know, the voltage range, voltage slash frequency range. And I boosted the minimum from 500 all the way up to 1500. So this is on a 6700 XT. If you're running a different model card, you can still apply the same methodology. So by default, my stock voltage is 1200 MV and my max frequency is like 28 something and my default is 500. So just going off that, you can look at yours and if your default is, you know, 1100 MV, you can knock about 50 MV off. This is more for temperature though, not stability. The more important part for stability is lower your max frequency a little bit. And I know that's annoying. You want the max performance of your card, but this will actually give you more stable performance and temperatures anyway. And more importantly, driver stability, which is, you know, critical for actually using your card. So if your if your default is whatever it is, I recommend starting with try knocking 100 megahertz off the max frequency. So if you're on, you know, 2700, go 26 and etc. And then just boost your minimum frequency depending on what it is, like um, I recommend going up to around 1500 megahertz on RDNA 2 cards, so 6000 series, and probably the same for RDNA 1, like they do behave very similarly, and your max frequency will likely be north of 2000 anyway, so you know, as long as it's not like, you can put it all the way like 100 megahertz below your max frequency, but that's not necessary, because there are games that just do not need like the way that the algorithm works, uh, the boosting algorithm for less intensive games, it's still going to want to sit around 1500 for like League of Legends or something. So I recommend 1500 and it just helps with the voltage stability, especially at desktop and idle, even though the card is not running at these frequencies. Like as you can see, I put minimum frequency 1500, that's what I default to. If I discard changes and open it again, I default to that and it's still running 144. So it's more to do with probably the voltage and max frequency adjustments that have helped stabilize somehow. I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going on in the driver behind the scenes, but it has helped stabilize my card. And I wanted to just share that so that anyone else having issues can try it and disable your VRAM tuning. And as well, this is another um, compatibility issue. If you're running MSI Afterburner, do not mess with your fan profiles or anything in MSI Afterburner. Just use it for an OSD and then go into your, where is it, settings. Um, i got to find it here. It's under preferences, sorry. And disable everything except for in-game overlay and system tray menu, but then don't use the actual overlay uh, if you're using the AMD overlay, just to rule it out. You can turn it back on after once you're sure that your driver's stable, and then you can see if it's triggering anything, but don't use under performance metric, disable all this. And you can see here, I've got the overlay completely turned off. And then under settings, hotkeys, you can see I've deleted the overlay hotkey, so it does not run 
Um, I only use Radeon Super Resolution. That is what they added. And Radeon Super Resolution also is incompatible with Fidelity FX and other features. So if I go into my if I go into my settings display tab, sorry, graphics tab, you can see here, I've enabled this and it automatically turned all this stuff off. So that's one other thing. You can just check your graphics tab, make sure there's not like, it shouldn't let you anyway. If I try to turn on image sharpening, for example, it tells me it's mutually ex exclusive with super resolution and that'll disable it. But in just in case, for some reason, if your driver messed up, um, I did just update my previous drivers without doing any DDU or anything like that but I'm just sharing what my driver is set like, and it's 100% stable. Like you can see here, I can navigate the menus, nothing's crashing, um, it's perfectly fine. But out of the box, just fresh install, I was getting the constant driver crashes. So, you know, I have to kind of share why my system's stable. And I also want to share one more workaround because you may have noticed in here, if you're a 6700 XT owner, that my max voltage is actually lower than the stock 6700 XT. And that is because I soft modded my driver so that on boot up, before the driver even loads, it's running off a registry soft mod where my undervolt is effective on boot. And that also helps because the profile does not necessarily load straight away until the Radeon driver loads. And so the profile is in here under the performance tab. You know, normally you load your profile like this on a fresh driver update. And this undervolt profile I have, like if I just click it and show you it, uh, it was 1150, 2600, 1500, right? This would not always load quick enough and I would get the driver icon crashing, which would cause it to not load. And then I'd have to go into the settings and manually load it. Okay, so that's where the soft mod method is a workaround. And soft modding is when you use more power tool, which is a tool on Igor's lab. It's like a GPU modding uh, tech website. Um, and soft modding basically enters it into the registry, but you still have to load it on every driver update, but it'll persist between driver crashes or anything like that. So basically, if my driver happened to crash for whatever reason, my soft mod will not get erased. My minimum frequency, all of this will remain in effect until I manually update my driver to the next version. Then all I have to do is load the soft mod again, uh, which is a more power tool file, and then write SPPT, which basically puts it into the registry to load before the, the software. So if you're curious on that, uh, I can do a quick guide. I work 740 minutes. Okay, the quick guide is download GPU-Z, which is where you get your BIOS. You're not modding your BIOS. You're using the BIOS to get a reference table of all the important parameters because this will be blank if you just load more power tool without having a BIOS file. And GPU-Z lets you extract your card's BIOS. So here's the app, GPU-Z. And this is for any, you know, RDNA card that's having, or even AMD card that's having stability issues. And then open GPU-Z and click this BIOS button. It's an extract button. Save to file. And then save that into a folder called BIOS or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter because you're not modding it. You're just loading the ROM into more power tool. So then you download more power tool, which I'll link in the comments below. And run it. Select your GPU, which will, there'll be a drop down, it'll be blank, and then you look for your, your GPU should be here. And then click load, which loads the BIOS file, because this will all be blank by default. Uh, load the BIOS file, that'll give you your BIOS parameters. And then this is where you undervolt. You go to the power tab, and this is where your max voltage is. This is the max voltage that's normally in Radeon. So a little bit like, you know, normally it'll be 1200. And if you know what your undervolt value is, maybe add 10 MV to your typical undervolt if your driver is crashing. So normally I have 1150, I put in 1160. Uh, not, not under soft, sorry. Leave that alone. Normally I have 1150 here in the voltage and put it, I put it as 1160 like that. So don't touch stock. Uh, that is different. It's not actually for the GPU voltage. It's soft voltage, which is the socket. Um, but basically, you don't need to mess with sock. If you don't know what you're doing, do not touch any of the other parameters. We're only adjusting user accessible settings that you could normally make a profile for anyway. So 1160 in here. And then on frequency, this is where you underclock your frequency. So max frequency normally is 2854. And I set mine to 2600. So, you know, you can do one or 200 lower. It just depends on how much you care about every extra frame. And then boost the minimum, you know, by about a thousand. So we're not touching any of these other parameters, just 
increasing the gra the default graphics clock, and that should work along the curve. Like because your curve is naturally going to be higher, it helps with stability. If there happens to be a GPU load, like you open a browser that uses hardware acceleration, so what you're doing is you're making it. If there is a spike in usage that would normally have been unstable because it's running 500 megahertz and that voltage that the driver is doing is somehow unstable, it will spike to 15 instead. That's the best way I can explain it. It helps with the curve stability. And then you can also set a lower t target temperature if you having issues with fan profiles. For me, I have issues with zero RPM. If zero RPM is enabled and Afterburner is running in the background, even though I have not set anything in Afterburner, I notice my fan goes wonky sometimes. So Afterburner, even you're using it for an on-screen display, and you're not doing any profile tuning in here, this is just reading off the driver profile, right? If you have zero RPM enabled, you might notice some incompatibility and strange driver behavior with your fans sitting at zero, and then they'll suddenly go up to 4,000 RPM, and ridiculous stuff like that. So basically, I completely disabled zero RPM so that I don't have to disable it through the driver. So it's just disabled all the time. As you can see here, I have no zero RPM switch. If you're interested in that, uncheck this box and then lower your target temperature to like 70 or 67. And that'll also help with just, you don't even need a fan curve anymore. Like I don't need a fan curve to have decent temps now uh, under load. So after you've done all that, uh, you don't really have to mess around with anything else. There, there is a guide on Eagles Lab that goes more into the curve tuning and things like that. But I found just messing with these few settings is enough, even just the maximum frequency and minimum frequency may be enough to sort out your problem and disable zero RPM if you're running MSI Afterburner. That is my personal recommendation. And then save your profile, as you can see, and it'll be an MPT file. And then after you've saved it, click write SPPT. And if it worked, like if you've done everything properly, this is what will, it'll look like. I'll just load my existing profile, it's not gonna hurt to rewrite it. And when you click write SPPT, it will be effective after a reboot. And when I click it, it pops up successfully added. So that all those changes, which is here, I'll show you my actual settings. 1162 on DFX, frequency 2600, basically what's showing in my driver right now. And your max voltage will also be adjusted because it affects the curve if you're doing the undervolt. But you don't really need that for the stability improvement. I believe it's mostly related to having a higher minimum frequency for your graphic clock when loads happen to spike your GPU for some reason around 500 or down here is not stable for certain loads. Uh, especially people will say it'll happen at desktop and when they open their browser and browsers use hardware acceleration. So think about it. The browser is trying to use your GPU. That's when the driver crash happens. So hopefully that helps you out. And basically with this, it will load on boot before your driver loads. And all you have to do is if you do get a driver update like push through via here, after the driver update, your MPT will be reset. Uh, if you want to remove the more power tool, like for example, it's, it's crashing in game still, or you want to adjust it, you can just load that same profile you saved again and tweak it and then just write SPPT again. Or if you just want to completely remove the, the MPT table, just click delete SPPT and it, it won't hurt anything. It'll just remove it, then reboot. So that's how you undo it as well. And then after the driver updates, you have to basically just load it like this and write SPPT again and that will reinstall it, uh, we'll put it back because it gets wiped uh, on every driver update. But other than driver updates, the, the best part about it that I got to stress is when your driver crashes and you have an MPT table, your minimum frequency and all that will be automatically loaded, like it's not gonna get erased. Well, I noticed if you have, if I had power outages using the manual you know, driver method of tuning, a power outage will reset my undervolt and reset my minimum frequency and cause more instability because of that weird low minimum frequency range that is not stable when when using hardware acceleration. So that's what I wanted to stress is that, yeah, your profile loaded in here is not going to be effective. As soon as your driver crashes or something happens with your power, you get a power outage, your undervolt gets disabled. And then as soon as you reboot the computer, you'll have driver crashes straight away because you have to manually reload your undervolt just to get it to be in effect. And sometimes you can't even make it into this tab because the driver starts crashing so frequently, especially on 22.3.2 and 22.3.1. So yeah, this soft mod method is probably what I would recommend. I want anyone having issues, just give it a go. Um, and I'm not affiliated with Igor's Lab or the people that made this tool. I'm just going to give the links in the comments. It's just what I've personally done to get my system stable. And as you can see, 
Um, I've, I've got no issues. Like if I load up heaven, if you're on an unstable card, you load up heaven and I'm recording with Relive, you know, like you'd be crashing already just loading that up. I'll just show it running real quick just to show that I'm able to do that with the browser window, uh, the Radeon software open in the background. This would crash for sure uh, if you're having the kind of stability issues people have been complaining about. And I'll just uncap the FPS. I do normally cap it because of massive power savings, especially if you're not running 144 hertz. Uh, if you cap your FPS like within five, five above or five below your your monitor's refresh rate, the power savings potential is massive. So just an example, this has nothing to do with stability. I'm just talking about heat and temperatures, but we're running 67 degrees uncapped to run a 1080p window, right? And that's 160 watts, 170 watts. And I'm on a 100 hertz monitor. So if I cap it down to 105 FPS, which no input latency difference, really. I drop the power consumption by like 50 watts on average, depending on what scene it's doing. You know, it's still going to put some load, but even 40, 40 to 50 watts, 30 watts, it's still savings. And the fan profile using the more power tool is a little bit slower than having an actual curve set in your driver, but it'll stabilize at a better temperature. As you can see, it's going down to 63 degrees, 64. And then if I uncap it, just what's the, uh, this is the hotspot temperature here. If I uncap it, it automatically jumped by four degrees, like it immediately jumped up and it'll, it'll slowly climb up to 70 plus. And I'm using much more power. See, 74 degrees. So that it's like 10 degrees higher just from running uncapped. And it's not worth it for the majority of games, especially playing single player, uh, Cyberpunk or Ghostwire Tokyo, anything like that. You can just benefit from having that FPS cap and Reva tuner. And you can just see my temperatures drop by 10 degrees and power consumption is down by like 40 watts or, or more. So I just share that, that's just an additional thing. If you ever, if you do want to use um, Afterburner, you just install it. Do not make any, do not make any changes in this section. Just leave it alone. And you just add your, you know, your game EXE, navigate to your game EXE so that you have a specific profile for each game. So you might have those competitive games where you do want a higher FPS cap, um, but FPS caps in general, as long as they're not below your monitor refresh rate, will not severely affect your input latency, even for competitive titles. You know, especially if you're not hitting certain FPS targets in the first place, you might find that if you cap your FPS a bit lower, you'll actually end up with smoother overall performance and less FPS drops. Because if your GPU is already pushing 99% 160 FPS and you're on a 144 hertz monitor, um, then when something really intensive comes up, you'll get a drop to like 120 FPS because there's no more GPU headroom available to handle the intensive graphical workload. So if you cap it down to 150 and you have like a few percent, your FPS drops are going to be lower, uh, like your minimum 1% are going to improve. And that's just from my own testing. But I just wanted to share that in there because not everyone knows how, how useful having an FPS cap can be. And you can just go into the driver and set it on a hotkey uh, in via MSI Afterburner. There's a, where is it? It's in here somewhere. There's a hotkey button that you can set for having your FPS cap. Uh, maybe it's actually in Reva Tuner itself under setup. So in Reva Tuner, where is it? No, it was in, sorry, I'm, I'm crazy. Um, it is in MSI Afterburner. So under, where is it? On-screen display, toggle on-screen display. I've got it on a hotkey for F9 and toggle frame rate limiter is F10. So that way you don't even need to worry about like opening menus and stuff. If I'm playing a game, like you might see in my uploads on YouTube that I'm gaming a lot and you know I always show my OSD. I do not play like that normally. I just play it to show you guys how the game's running. But as soon as I'm finished recording, I hit F9 and then the, um, the OSD is gone. Or, you know, if I if I normally run, you see me running uncapped, I, sh I do it to show the uncapped performance. But realistically, when I'm gaming, I'll put an FPS cap on to save power because, you know, power bills are going up. It just depends on your circumstances. But sometimes saving a few extra watts for no noticeable boost in performance is, is definitely worthwhile. And you can just have it all on hotkeys. So, you know, uncapped, capped, and remove OSD, you know, Anyway, I hope that helps some of you out and take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.